What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video we're going to look at this function, we're going to find the inverse of this function as well as the domain and range of both this function and its inverse function. So this is a really good exercise, I actually gave this to my pre-cal students a few days ago so this look, should look very familiar to them and by the way to my students you will see this come up again. This will be on your next assignment, and it won't be this. The numbers will be slightly changed, so we will have to know how to do this. It may even be on your next quiz or next exam. So I think it will come up. So hopefully this video will clear things up because I had the same confusion come at the same step with finding this inverse function. So I'm gonna point out that step, hopefully clear up that confusion. We're gonna find the inverse function, the domain range, all that stuff, and then you can go on to your textbook, look at some examples just like this, and try it on your own and see if you can do it. So that way you'll be able to do it on the quiz and exam and that sort of thing, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is, well, for me personally, I like to replace f of x with y. It's just an easier notation to deal with, especially when we start doing these algebraic manipulations, okay? Replace f of x with y. And by the way, quick message, I'm gonna go a little bit quick with this, but I do actually already have two videos on inverse functions where I really break it down slower. I'll link those right above here. For this video, I'm sort of assuming that this is a little bit of a review that you already know a little bit about this stuff, okay? So again, replace f of x with y. Now what do we do? Switch x and y. And what I mean by that is not do that algebraically, but literally just anywhere we see a y, we replace it with x. Anywhere we see an X, we replace it with Y, okay? So literally just switch the X's and Y's. Now what's our goal? We wanna solve for Y. If we can get Y equals something, right? Then we can just replace that Y with the F inverse notation and we're good to go. That's our inverse function, okay? But we need Y equals something and that something needs to be in terms of X. We can't have any Y's in it, which that'll come up, we'll see, okay? So the first thing I wanna do right now is get rid of this ugly fraction. I'm not trying to be mean to the fraction, but anything with fractions is typically just harder to deal with than anything without fractions. So if we ever have the chance to do something like this and get rid of fraction, we usually do that. So what am I left with here? Y minus one times X, Y minus one, times x. Should I go ahead and distribute that? I think y'all can handle me doing a couple steps in, in one, right? I'm going to distribute that x. I think I can handle it. x times y. This is pre-cal, right? I've already taken algebra. We're good. x times y minus x equals, what am I left with here? Negative 2y. So pause the video here if you need to and check my work. Make sure I did everything correctly. Okay, so what can I do from here? And this is where the confusion kind of starts. Most students actually got to here. Most students did. But the problem here is that we want to solve for y. So what some people did was, I don't know, I saw a few different things. A lot of people divided both sides by negative 2. We're trying to get y equals. But again, the problem is we have y equals, and we have a y here as well. That's an issue. That's a big issue, right? We want y equals something, and that something can't have any y's in it. All x's, right? A function in terms of x, okay? So that's the issue, but when this comes up, what we can do is we can get everything with y on one side of the equation, right? All the terms with y in them, get those on one side. Everything else, the things that don't have y, get those on another side, and then we can do something really clever. So first, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna add two y to both sides, because again, all this has a y in it. It's a y term, so I'm gonna bring it over here with this y guy, okay? So add two y to both sides, and then I can also add x. This term does not have a y, poor guy. I'm gonna move him over here. So plus x plus x. Let's see what this does here. I did two steps in one again. I'm really confident that y'all are gonna be good at this. Okay, so minus two, there we go. See what I canceled? Minus x plus x minus two y plus two y, gone. I'm left with exactly what I wanted. All the y terms on the left-hand side and all the non-y terms on the right hand side. So why did I do this? No pun intended. Why did I do this? Well, look what I can do now. I can do something that we learned a long time ago and that we spent a bunch of time on and probably forgot by now. But that's something, it's, it's a six letter F word. Can you think of it? I can do something, factor. I can factor, all right? I can factor out this Y and look what happens when I do this. Y, what am I left with? X plus two. If I factor out this Y, now look. Now I just have one y. I don't have y appearing twice. It appears once and it's being multiplied by something. And since I have y times something and I'm trying to solve for y, I can just divide by that thing that y is being multiplied by, right? So I can just divide by x plus 2, divide both sides by x plus 2, of course. 
that will cancel, and I'll have just y by itself, which is my inverse function. So I'm going to go all the way up here. That means that f inverse, right, all I'm doing is replacing the y with f inverse. x over x plus 2. Bam. All right, f inverse equals x over x plus 2. And again, let's go ahead and review this one more time. So anytime we see y appear twice in two different terms like that, or maybe even three, who knows? Get all those y terms over on one side, everything without y on another side, factor out the y, and then divide both sides by whatever y is being multiplied by. That's going to get the y by itself, and then just replace y with its inverse function. So here's a fun and also very tedious exercise for the viewer. I'm not going to do this, but how can we confirm that this answer is correct? How could we confirm it if we wanted to? Well, if this function truly is the inverse function of this function, then when I form a composite function, I should get x, right? Basically, if I plug one function into the other, I should get out just x. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's plug this function into this one. So I get negative 2 times x over x plus 2 over, let's see what's in the bottom, x over x plus 2 minus 1. Okay, so that's what I get when I plug this function in. Again, i got to plug it in to both x's, right? I have x in two different spots in that function. So see if you can do some a bunch of tedious algebra and prove to me that this equals x. Let me know in the comments if you actually did it. And you can even do it the other way around too. Plug this function into this one and do that as well. You should get x for both of those composite functions, right? All right, guys, so hopefully that made sense. The last thing we're going to do is find the domain and range of both the original function as well as the inverse function. And to do this, we're actually going to take advantage of a really cool fact about functions and their inverse functions. There's a relationship between a function and its inverse that has to do with domain and range, and you probably know it, okay? That relationship is that the domain of a function is the same as the range of its inverse, and the range of a function is the same as the domain of its inverse. So instead of finding four things, like it seems like we're being asked to find four things, really we just have to find two. We can find two of these things and we can copy them down into the other positions that are the same, right? So I like to find domain. I personally think that's the easiest to find, especially with these rational expressions. Finding the range, it's a little more conceptual. The domain for me is easy. So I'm gonna find the domain of f of x and the domain of the inverse function and then just copy down for the range, right? Uh, this domain will be this range. This domain will be this range. Just copy it down, make sure it lines up. It's a lot easier than going through and finding four things individually. So the domain of this original function, I'm looking at what can't I plug in for x. I'm gonna exclude those values from the domain. I don't have any square roots. I'm not worried about negatives under square roots, but I do have a rational function with a denominator that has x in it, and I can't have zero in the denominator that's undefined. So really what I wanna do is x minus one equals zero, I want to solve this for x, and you can probably just look at it and tell that you can't plug in 1 to this function, and if you just looked at it and were able to tell that, then that's awesome. That's great. That is the domain. is all real numbers except for 1. So I'm going to use interval notation. Negative infinity to 1, union, 1 to infinity. You could also use like a set builder notation, x such that x is not equal 1, whatever you prefer. It's all good. All right, now I'm going to find the domain of this inverse function, a very similar thing. There's no square root, so I'm just going to take the denominator and look at when that is equal to zero, because wherever that's equal to zero, that's a value that I have to exclude from the domain. So that's going to be negative two. So we have all real numbers except for negative two. So I can write that as from negative infinity to negative two, union negative two to infinity, bam. Now what can I do? I can copy down this domain of the inverse function to this range of the original function because we know a little bit about inverse functions and we are smart enough to know that this domain is the same as this range. So let's see, negative two to infinity and then I'm gonna do a similar, well, the same thing really with this domain and this range. So again, I just found two things and I was clever about it and I was able to find all four of these things by really just finding two of them and it was actually pretty quick and pretty easy, right? 
not too bad. So hopefully this makes sense. This is just the way I do it. There's probably other ways to do it. Maybe you have a way that works better for you that you understand better than do it that way. I don't care as long as you can do it, but hopefully this video helped in some way, shape, or form. Check out my other videos. If you need more help, share this video, like it, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. See y'all later.